Hi, this is Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Welcome to the weekly top three, the top three things on our mind here at Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets for the week of December 5th, 2022. The weekly top three is a regular segment on the Michael Duke Show. The show broadcasts on both Facebook Live and YouTube Live, as well as via streaming audio from the show's website, weekdays from 6 to 8 a.m. I join Michael weekly in the first hour of Tuesday's show from 6.25 to 7 a.m. for a discussion between the two of us about our three issues. We post the podcast of our discussion following the show on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages, also on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets website, as well as the projects page on national blog site medium.com. You can find past episodes of the weekly top three also at the same locations. Keep in mind that in addition to these podcasts, during the week, you also can follow and participate in the discussion with us of these and other issues affecting Alaska's fiscal and economic condition by following us on the Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets Facebook page and through our posts on Twitter. This week, our top three issues are these. First, we discuss what we think is the missing question in all of the media stories on the need for additional K-12 spending. Second, the Anchorage Daily News editorial board says Alaskans need to tone down the rhetoric and seek compromise, then promptly ignores the rule itself. And third, we discuss how the new Senate majority talks a lot about the areas that need additional spending, but ignores how they intend to pay for it. And now, let's join Michael. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, first and f- first and foremost on the weekly top three, uh, number one is this idea that somehow, some way, uh, we've got to uh, you know talk about these K twelve closures, and but everybody's missing one thing. And what is the one thing, Brad? Well, let's let's. Well, the one thing is how we're going to pay for them. I mean, the 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 you read all these articles about how horrible it would be to close this school or how horrible it would be to shift this program. The the article I sent you the link on is to shift a, a certain program out of one Eagle River school to, to another and how horrible and how, how, uh, how bad the, uh, the, the consequences are of doing that. <clears throat> but the articles never go into how are we going to pay for uh, all of this additional uh, uh, K through 12 spending that the legislature is talking about uh, maintaining in order to avoid uh, these consequences. The, the question, the question I would I would like uh, the reporters to ask, I think, would be a relevant question to 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 uh, to the to the people they're talking to, to the mothers, to the families, to the teachers, to the superintendents, uh, to everybody. Is are you willing to pay taxes uh, uh, to to maintain uh, uh, the, the schools? Are you willing to pay taxes in order to uh, increase revenues to 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 maintain these programs? And see what the see what the answers are. I mean, now now everybody, you know, a lot of these are top twenty percent schools. So a lot of people are thinking, well, we're just gonna we're just gonna have to pay take a little bit more in PFD cuts, um, or or take some in PFD cuts in order to uh, maintain these programs. That's fine by me. I'm the top twenty percent. It'll affect, you know, maybe a cup of coffee uh, from Starbucks a day. Uh, I can afford to do that. But as we've talked on the program, that hits middle and lower income Alaska families dispar- disproportionately large. So right. if, if we're going to maintain these programs equitably, if we're going to pay for uh, these programs equitably, we should be paying taxes for them. We, everybody should be chipping in to maintain the programs, not just shift the cost of middle and lower income uh, Alaska families. And I'd like to see the answers of, of these people who are arguing for maintaining these programs and maintaining the schools when they're asked, are you willing to pay taxes for it? I think, I think we'd get some interesting answers. Even if we got yeses, I think that would be helpful. I mean, it would it would tell us that at least some segment of the population are willing to pay an equitable share of the costs um, of maintaining schools. But I'm going to guess that a lot of these people are going to say, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, uh, we've got PFDs. We ought to be using the PFD money. In other words, we ought to be shifting the burden to middle and lower income Alaska families to pay for all this. I don't want to pay for it. Um, right. but, but, these, but these articles... Article after article after article after article talks about the need, the demand, the, 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 the reason for additional spending. And then those same articles, article after article after article after article, fail to talk about 
uh, how we're going to pay for it and uh, and where where the money's coming from. That's an issue that we should be discussing at the same time as we're talking about increasing spending. How much of this, Brad, do you think comes from the fact that, uh, you know, people have forgotten the difference between what's nice to have and what's a must have? I mean, the Constitution mandates education, but it doesn't mandate, you know, it doesn't mandate a certain level of education. It doesn't say it's all got to be Cadillac or gold plated or we got to you should only have to go a quarter mile to your local school instead of 10 miles to your local school. I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of questions in there. And and it doesn't even you know, of course, it doesn't talk at all about mismanagement of funds. They act like this, especially in the Anchorage area. They act like this is a shock shock. I tell you that we're 68 million. Oh my God, where did this come from? They've been talking about this for five or six years, but they just keep sweeping it under the rug. And now it's crisis and crunch time. Well, Michael, I think it's because we never confront costs. I mean, it's always about, we need this, we need that, we need to spend more on this, we need to spend more on that. But we never ask people, are you willing to pay for it? Are, are you willing to pay for it out of your pocket in terms of an income tax or you know, a, a, at a minimum, a sales tax, some sort of more equitable tax than PFD cuts? We never ask them if they're willing to pay for it. If, if that was on the table, if the, if the, if, at the time you said, I want more spending because I don't want to close this program, or I want more spending because I don't want to add to uh, the student count, uh, the classroom count uh, for teachers. I want more spending. If at the same time you said that, you had to answer the question, and how, are you, how do you want to pay? How are you going to pay for it? Are you willing to pay taxes for it? I think I think there would be I think there would be a much different dynamic going on, but people think it's a free good. I mean, the legislature, if anything, has 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 conditioned them to think, oh well, it'll be free good. We'll just take it more out of PFDs. We'll just shift the cost to middle and lower income Alaska families. You won't have to pay for it. Top twenty percent families, you won't have to pay for it. Just keep demanding all you want because you're never going to have to pay for it. And they never they never Alaskans in these at least in these interviews, but Alaskans also elsewhere never have to make that that cost belt benefit analysis if they did if they had to if if the if the tax if the question about taxes was asked then they might say oh well what about mismanagement or what about too much administration or what about you know what about uh, uh, more consolidation or what about maybe we could do it this way that would be that would be less costly if they if the balance was put in those was put in the questions and if the balance was put to Alaskans that Yes, you want more, but you're going to have to pay for it. And are you willing to pay for it? Um, uh, you, you, top 20% families, are you willing to pay for it? Uh, I think I think the discussion would be would be a lot different. Well, and yesterday we had a conversation with Rob Myers, uh, who talked about this. And he said, look at what we've done, even in just the last uh, 20 years. Uh, you know, we started out in the middle of the pack educationally as far as aptitude and achievement scores. Uh, and we've slowly it's it's been a downward it's been a downward slope right into the bottom. Yet at the other side, there's an inverse increase into the uh, into the expenditure side. So we're spending more today than we ever have for worse results. And and uh, and Chris is right. Chris in uh, on Twitch says, you know, the public schools have resisted any long, you know, overdue uh, 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 reforms. They won't even talk about that. That's, I mean, that's insanity. They won't even talk about it. Well, that's because, that's because it's always, the, the solution is always throw more money at it. That's because they think if, if it gets bad enough, we'll just ask for more money. People will get out, right? We'll talk about closing schools or we'll talk about, you know, increasing class size or we'll talk about transferring programs. And people will say, oh no, don't do that. Just throw more money at it. And, and we've conditioned people to think it's a free good to throw more money at it because, the money will come from somebody else. The money will come from middle and lower income. At least in the in the twenty teens, it just came from it came from future Alaska families. It came from savings that would have benefited future Alaska families. So we were just we were just taxing future Alaska families to pay for it. Now we're taxing current Alaska families, but they found a way to push it to middle and lower income Alaska families, so the top twenty percent don't have to pay for it. And and people just think it's a free good. So it so they don't demand accountability. They don't say, "Oh my gosh, you know, um, uh, uh, scores are going down or or performance is going down." So we need to throw more money at it. That's the solution. We need to throw more. They don't they they don't balance that by saying, "Well, we can't throw more money because I would have to pay for it then, and I don't want to pay for it." So we need to find accountability accountability in some other way. 
the the the, right. the free good, the the thought that it's a free good has just has just destroyed, I think, the balance that otherwise would occur if people thought they had to pay for this. Uh, one final thought for me on this. Um, you know, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I used to have to be bused from I live 14 miles away from the nearest school, right? 14 miles from the nearest school. And, and these it folks uphill, in it, it, it was uphill both ways, right? Uphill yeah. both ways in the snow, walk, <laughs> in the snow year round, uh, barefoot, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, the 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 reaction from a lot of these people in Anchorage with, oh, we don't want to close our local school. It's been there for so long and it's so close. And I'd have to go halfway across town. You know, I'd have to go like three miles to the and it, it's just we be, it's like hashtag first world problems. I mean, come on. Yes. So you might have to close down one school and consolidate at another school. It's not the end of the world. It's it's crazy. But they don't think they have to pay for it, Michael. They don't think they have to. They think if they if they complain enough, if they if they are loud enough, if they talk long enough about it, money will pour in. The legislature will pour in more money um, and, and they won't have to pay for it because it'll just come magically from someplace else. That, that's how we've conditioned people to think about that. And and so and so, yeah, you know, if it's a free good, heck no, I don't want to close this school. If it's a free good, I just want money to pour in and and save me from having to worry about, you know, getting Johnny across town or having to put Johnny on a bus in the morning. If it if it's balanced with and how are you going to pay for it? Are you willing to pay taxes? Are you willing to pay an income tax? Are you willing to pay a flat tax? Are you willing if people had to think about, oh, my gosh, I have to pay for this stuff. That is a, that is an entirely different balance than uh, than what we than what we've walked ourselves into uh, uh, over the past uh, decade. And I think it is all summed up very nicely by Brian in the chat room, who says one thing: money is a hell of a drug. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, I mean, that should be a T-shirt for Alaska because that is exactly where we're at today. Uh, it you know it pretty much everything, right? Well, exactly, Michael. I mean, when, when and and it's money's a hell of a drug when it's coming from somebody else, right? It's it, it, it as long as the state's going to provide it, I don't have to pay for it. I don't have to pay taxes for it. I don't have to. I don't have to worry about it myself. I can just you know, if I complain enough, the money will show up from someplace. In the twenty teens, it showed up from savings. In the twenty twenties, it's showing up from uh, from cuts in the PFD taxes on middle and lower income Alaska families. Um, yeah, as long as it's a free good, heck yes, I want more of it. it you want you want to cut my school? No, no, I want more free goods. I want I want I want you to, to keep my school open. I want more teachers. I want more programs. I, you know, I want I want this and I want that. In, in until people personally have to balance, you know, the cost of of doing these additional programs to them, not just to somebody else, not just you know theoretically to. You know, some other group, oh, yeah, the money's got to come from someplace. Somebody has to pay it, but it's not me, so I don't care. As long as as long as long people can do that, we're not going to get these problems solved. Uh, we're just going to continue to see people pushing for more and more and more. And and the news, the news is just, uh, the media is just perpetuating this because they're writing all these articles about, I, about you know, I need this in, in Nunaka. I need this in, in, in Eagle River. I need this, you know, over here, and I need that over there. None of the articles are asking, and how are you going to pay for it? And how do you propose to pay for it? And are you willing, you parents, willing to, to pay for it? I mean, back in the old days, back when people walked uphill both ways to school, yeah, we had, we, we, had we had local school districts back in the old days. The parents of that school district had to pay for it, right? Now we're not only, now we're not only you know, spreading it across the state, we're spreading it, we're, we're focusing it on middle and lower income Alaska families. So top 20, top 20% parents don't even have to think about it. Well, wait, Brad, it's even worse than that. Because what's happening today, of course, is they're getting all this filthy lucre from the state. And then the local communities are having to pay for it on top of that, because some of them are paying up to the cap already. In, I mean, they're not only are they getting the, the state money, they're then taxing the local community to the max of their tax caps and giving the maximum contribution to schools on top of that. I mean, that, that's the thing. Yes, but to the max of their tax caps, Michael. I mean, the additional money, is, uh, most of the money is coming from the state. And certainly the additional money that people are talking about now would come from the state. I mean, you, you listen to the superintendent of the Anchorage 
school district and he says, oh, it's the BSA. We've got to increase the BSA. I mean, someone's educated him to, to say that because um, he's, he's brand new on the scene. He doesn't know, you know where the money comes from. But you, you, everybody is focusing now on the state, on the BSA. BSA is the big problem. We've got to increase the, the BSA or we've got to increase the, the foundation formula. We've got to increase this or we've got to increase that. Everybody's focused on the state. So, yes, there are local contributions being made. And I, and I don't want to downplay those, but, but the additional money that people are talking about to maintain their current schools, avoid consolidation or maintain the current programs, they're all talking about that coming from the state. And they're right. all thinking it's going to come from PFD cuts and from middle and lower income Alaska families that they're not going to have right. to pay. I wasn't trying to dilute your message. I'm just saying it's even worse than that because on top of all the state stuff, they're they're taxing the local people to the max anyway. Uh, Terry says the Matsu delegation says to look for a BSA to increase to $1,000 per student. That would be almost a doubling of the BSA. I mean, that is insane. But that's that's what we're talking about right now. And that's and that's just sort of phase one. I mean, phase two, as we've talked about on the program before, phase two is going to be well, and we need to have, you know, we need to have uh, change the retirement so teachers stay, so we have additional, you know, support for uh, for teachers. We need to have the defined benefit plans uh, uh, for the teachers, and then we're going to need to have other state employees employees folded into these defined benefit plans. So yeah, the B the BSA is part of it, but that's just sort of phase one. By the end of the session, we're going to see a huge education package that may be divided up in parts to sort of, you know, try to try to hide how big it is. But part of it's going to be BSA, part of it's going to be some grants uh, to, to schools in need. And then and then there's going to be this other chunk out there to, you know, retain teachers and and to and to and to help uh, help bring additional teachers on board. And that's going to be, you know, in the defined benefit plan. So it's going to be, yeah, it, we're going to see a lot of money, uh, people people talking about a lot of money in this session um, and, 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 and not talking about, are you willing to pay for it? It's going to be a lot of money and we're going to, we're going to be having middle and lower income Alaska families pay for it. Okay. So that's number two, Brad, or that's number one, uh, Brad. Number two is the ADN's idea of, uh, of, 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 compromise the ADNs. Give us a tease for this before we go to break. ADN wrote an editorial over the weekend. The ADN editorial board wrote an editorial over the weekend talking about what they want to see in Dunleavy's second term and talking about how they think Dunleavy should uh, should approach this. And they were all about compromise and and doing things better and lowering the rhetoric and all that sort of stuff. But there's one phrase <laughs> in, in this editorial that shows the ADN really doesn't believe that. They believe the other side ought to compromise and they believe the other side ought to lower the rhetoric, but them, nah, they ought to, they, they're, they're, they're going to continue to push and, and continue to uh, use rhetoric for, uh, for what they think is, uh, is the right thing. So we'll, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Wait, <clears throat> one rule for thee and another for me. Where have we heard that before? We're on to the number two of the weekly top three. We're, I don't know if we're going to get to all three. We're going to do our best here. Number two is the ADN's idea of compromise. There's air quotes, compromise. Brad, what do you mean? I mean, the ADN is, of course, non-biased and completely, I mean, just what do you mean compromise? Well, the ADN wrote, wrote this editorial that, that talks about, you know, Governor Dunleavy is entering his second term and, and talking about what they, what they would like to see from him. Certainly, they don't want a repeat of 2019 where the governor tried to cut spending. That's been one of the ADN's big drives. Another big drive has been that, that the ADN wants to use the PFD. I mean, there's a number of editorials they've written over the last several years about you know, cutting back the PFD is the right thing to do. That's the right thing to pay for these programs. Never addressing uh, the, the the impact on middle and lower income Alaska families, the inequitable impact on middle and lower income Alaska families, never addressing the impact on the overall Alaska economy, just saying, you know, we ought to be cutting back on the PFD. So in this, in this uh, editorial where they talk about the governor ought to lower the rhetoric, the governor ought to, you know, get along with the legislature, the governor ought to work for common solutions, uh, the governor ought to uh, uh, be good uh, in how he uh, plays uh, with the legislature. In the midst of, of all this, they then say, uh, 
that gave they're talking about the last session that gave lawmakers a get out of jail free card that allowed not only for an escape from hard budget choices, but also an irresponsibly large PFD uh, and one of the largest spending packages in Alaska history, irresponsibly large PFD. So in this, so in this editorial where they talk about, you know, lowering the rhetoric, lowering the heat, uh, working to compromise, uh, working to find compromise on issues, they, they themselves then, you know, read, reiterate and, and bring back their rhetoric of irresponsibly large uh, PFDs. And keep in mind, the PFD last session didn't even get to the statutory level. It was about POMV. It was about at the POMV 50-50 level, counting the uh, the energy rebate that was included. So it didn't even get back up to the statutory level. But that, you know, POMV 50-50 was an irresponsibly large PFD. So the ADN, the ADN talks a good game, likes to think they talk a good game about, you know, lowering the rhetoric and trying to work on compromise and trying to trying to bring people together. But when it comes to their core issues, uh, like cutting the PFD, there ain't no compromise going on. There ain't no lower rhetoric going on. And that's, look, and that's look, throughout the state. Look, there should be no name calling or anything else, but that but that irresponsible PFD, that's a big deal. I mean, you know, that that it's it's just it's crazy. And and, and Michael, it isn't just the ADM. I mean, everybody talks about I, I think everybody talks about lowering the rhetoric and talking about working together and talk, but but they all have their they all have their red lines, right? And when you get to one of their red lines, and, and there's like you know, 60 different red lines in the legislature, because we got 60 different legislators. When you get to when you get to their red their red line, oh no, we can't do that. I mean, that's irresponsible to do that. You can't you can't cross that red line. You can't do what you you can't cut you know that program because that's my program. Um, and and you just and and everybody if we're actually going to get a, a compromise, I mean, and and I'll go back to the fiscal policy working group. I think they did a great job of setting aside their red lines. And, you know, you had Mike Shower on there and he's talking about taxes. You have Jesse Keel on there and he's talking about, you know, uh, restoring the PFD. You've got, you've got people on there who dropped their red lines and actually worked toward a, toward a center. That was a good example of how to do this. But, you know, stuff like the ADN and stuff like we're seeing now with, out of legislators, well, you can't do that. You know, you've got to compromise. You've got to come, to, you gotta come you know, toward my position. But I'm sure as heck not giving up on my position. I'm sure Zach not given up on my red lines. The ADN, the ADN is just a, a another example of that sort of, of of attitude that we've got in the state, and we're never going to get. I mean, if if they say irresponsibly large PFD, then other people are going to say statutory PFD, no change, none, period. And 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 so you got these two extremes out there, both of which are saying you need to compromise, but you can't compromise on this issue because that's our issue. Uh, we're, we're, we're never going to get to a solution as long as we've got that. And for the ADN to spend an entire editorial going down that road and then undo themselves like that is just just typifies how uh, how we've gotten to the to this particular point in the state. Well, and in all fairness to the pro statutory PFD crowd, they were they were willing to compromise. There was like like you said, Mike Shower, et cetera, the governor. They all said, OK, 50 50. Uh, we'll go to the 50 50 POMB. And then, of course, immediately. The goal lines get moved again, and they say the other side says, "Okay, seventy-five twenty-five sounds good." Well, wait, we just comp. Well, no, I mean, yeah, you came halfway to us, so now we want you to come halfway. I mean, it's 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 mind-blowingly insane that this is kind of where we're at right now. But again, I and I have to laugh. Bottom of the editorial. This is the this is the tag at the bottom of the editorial. Editorial opinions are by the editorial board, which welcomes responses. Board members are ADN President Ryan Binkley, publisher Andy Pennington, and opinion editor Tom Hewitt. The board operates independently from the ADN newsroom. Not if you read and the stories, they don't. They are actually. I mean, this is this is exactly the tone of every article that you read in the ADN about the PFD, about how irresponsible it is to give Alaskans a PFD when we're in a fiscal crisis that was created by the same legislators. That I mean, just oh my God, it's yeah. This is the their idea of compromise is a lot different than ours. Well, and 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 you know the rhetoric. Up, up to that point, it's good. Let's lay down our weapons. Let's let's talk openly. Let's try to try to reach a solution. 
and then bam, yep. but an irresponsibly large PFD, which was which was less than the statutory PFD, was about POMB 50-50. Um, it's just, I, we're, we're going to get there unless people truly follow through on, on what they say they're doing. Unless the, AD, yeah. unless the AD, I mean, for an example, the ADN, unless the ADN really says, okay, let's talk about the PFD and stop using the irresponsibly large tag uh, to get there. Right. All right. Well, it looks like we've uh, made through that. Let's get on to number three. Number three is the Senate majority. They have lots of spending ideas, but really no idea about where the revenues are going to come from to match all this uh, glorious spending that they're talking about right now. Yeah, this is really just, you know, this is just sort of taking point one, which is we're not asking uh, citizens who are talking about K through 12. We're not asking them to talk about, you know, are they willing to pay for it? It's, it's the, the same thing's true once you get to the legislature. There's an article in the Juno Empire, which I thought was a good article about a speech that Jesse Keel gave, the senator from Juno gave to the Juno Chamber of Commerce, what he was looking for in this coming session. And he ran through the litany of increased K through 12 spending, uh, uh, defined benefits, both of which got applause uh, uh, from, from Juno, because Juno itself is also facing a a school crunch, a school funding crunch. And of course, you know, in the in the capital of of, of where of state employees talking about a defined benefit plan is going to get uh, applause. So, you know, he went ran through the litany of um, of uh, all the spending plans, but there was no there was no revenue. There was no discussion of the revenue to pay for it. It wasn't like, and are you willing to pay more? Are you willing to pay a tax uh, in order to uh, in order to achieve this? I mean. You know, Keel said, "Well, we're just not going to get to a tax this session. Uh, uh, I, I just don't think that that's a that's in the cards. Um, and you know, oil taxes. Maybe we'll talk about oil taxes, but you know, maybe maybe those work. Maybe those don't. No other. Re- and and as I wrote about in my column last week in the Alaska Landmine, even even oil taxes aren't enough to solve the deficits we're facing. No other discussion of revenues. Um, so where does that leave us? That leaves us with uh, with additional PFD cuts. So." It's, I mean, not only, not only is the news media, when they're talking to citizens, being, being uh, 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 one-sided by not asking them if they're willing to pay for it. When you get to the legislature, we're having the same thing. They talk about spending, spending on this, spending on that, spending on the other thing, but, but no discussion and no recognition that you have to increase revenues. You should be increasing revenues equitably. Uh, in order, if, if you're gonna if you're gonna have that additional spending, well, and it's not just it's complicit. It's it's not just this unbalanced thing. It's the news media appears to have been complicit in this whole idea of sure, let's talk about the gravy points and all the beauty of all this new spending, but no discussion on the effects of the economy, no discussion on the effects of the taking of the PFD, no discussion on any potential impacts of taxes now or in the future. I mean, it just it just goes on and on and on. And I mean, look, anybody who's who's looked at this impartially and with a rational I realizes that at the rate of spending that they're talking about right now, the rate of spending that we've had in the the past three or four years and where it's going in the future, the PFD is going to disappear. The PFD is going to be consumed completely. And then because there has been no discussion on uh, the revenues, there's been no discussions on how that balances out. The next thing will be, well, we can't possibly cut any. We're just going to have to talk about taxes now. It is coming. It is coming. And if we don't get ahead of it, we're going to get steamrolled. Well, it, it, Michael, it's we are being taxed now. PFD cuts are taxes. What what that what what's what's happening is we have we have taxes that are on middle and lower income Alaska families through PFD cuts. What we're talking about, what what will happen then is additional taxes. And then they'll say then they'll say, well, it ought to be a sales tax. You know, it ought to be something that 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 is, you know, do, doesn't doesn't touch your income. It ought to be a sales tax, which also is regressive, and also tilts against uh, middle and lower income Alaska families. So it's we we need to face this now. We need to face that we're being taxed now. We're being taxed in a way that takes most from middle and lower income Alaska families. The top twenty percent are viewing government services as free goods because they're not having to pay for it, and so they want more and more and more of it. Their solution to Every problem is more government spending, 
more spending on K through 12, more spending on energy, more spending on economic development, whatever that means, the three priorities that the Senate majority outlined. It's, and it's a free good. So yeah, let's just, let's just do more and more and more. We, to get this under control, I mean, and, and middle and lower income Alaska families are pay for, paying for it. So to get this under control, we need equ an equitable revenue source now so that people are facing up to the fact that they have to pay for these goods. These goods aren't, these goods aren't free. They have to pay, they should be paying for them um, as well. So you, you, whether it's the media when they're talking about K through 12 or whether it's the Senate when they're talking about additional spending here, there uh, and everywhere in the same speech, in the same sentence, in the, in, at least in the same paragraph, there ought to be, here's the spending we propose and here's how we propose to pay for it. And are you willing, are you Alaskans willing to, uh, to contribute in that way toward the additional spending? And they're going to get pushback. I think you're 100 percent right. Uh, let me go back to what you were talking about here just a bit ago. And that is, you know, uh, here's what I'm seeing in the state. And this is, again, I threw that idea against the wall here a couple of weeks ago and people lost their mind in the chat room. I'm like, maybe we should just change our perspective from no cuts to be in uh, support of a uh, of a flat tax, flat income tax period. Maybe we should just do that. Maybe instead of fighting and standing in the road and holding our fist out in front of the train that's about to run us over, we should just be like, okay, just get a tax. Let's just do that. Um, and of course, people lost their mind. But here's here's what I'm seeing, and here's what I'm coming to understand. Alaskans have become so tax adverse that the whole concept is government do whatever you want as long as you don't tax me L you know live within whatever bubble of monies that you have there including the pfd and uh and this is of course is assuming that alaskans don't consider the pfd cut a tax but they become so tax adverse that they're just like whatever you want to do government is fine as long as you don't tax me and that is what has allowed us to grow so much now with a POMV and Rob Myers talked about this yesterday, the permanent fund is growing at 50% faster than the economy. So government continues to grow faster and faster because uh, it's cumulative. It goes faster than the economy and they could do whatever they want as long as they don't tax Alaskans. And until we have skin in that game, we're going to continue to ignore it. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly right, Michael. I mean, you see that you see that in these interviews with parents and with administrators and others in the K through 12 discussion. It's like we need we need additional goods. We don't have to pay for them. So government just I mean, the state just needs needs to provide them. It, it, it is to me, it is it is particularized, particularized on the top 20 percent. They don't have to pay for you by using PFD cuts. They push the burden down to middle and lower income Alaska families and they don't have to pay for it. So it's free goods to them. It's like it's like it was in the 20 teens to to all Alaskans, right? By by bringing money out of spending, by using money, bringing money out of savings, by using money in savings. No Alaskans had to no current Alaskans had to worry about where the money was coming from. So every right. year, every year they'd say, oh, we're going to get spending under control. Uh, just, you know, give us another year and we'll get spending under control. And then the next year it'd be, oh, well, we just need to spend, we need to draw down savings a little bit more. The, tw the top 20% are still doing that. And the reason they're still doing that is because the funds we're using are taxes that just PFD cuts that just fall hardest on middle and lower income Alaska families. If we include them, if they have to pay also, and, and the way to get them to pay is through an equitable tax, if they have to pay also, we're going to have pushback. But until we have the top 20% with skin in the game, they're not, they're not going to push back. They're going to continue to say, well, you know, I need Johnny needs uh, this particular program at this particular place. I don't want to have to send him to someplace else. Just, just give me more BSA money or give me more grants or whatever it takes to keep this particular program going. I don't have to pay for it. It's free money. Just, just use it, use it for that. And, and we're going to continue. You're exactly right. I mean, the top 20% is going to continue to push to continue to spend uh, that money to continue to take money out of the PFD all the way through the, the 2020s. And at the end of the 2020s, we're going to be just in the same place we were at the end of the 20 teens with savings. They're going to be gone. And, and yeah, then we're going to, then we're going to have to confront taxes. And guess what? At that point, spending will stop. Because if the top 20% have to pay for it at that point, they'll say, oh, no, 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 no. 
no more spending. So now what we're getting now is we're getting additional spending because we're not confronting them with the costs. And, and again, and, and, and if we start doing that, then, then I think they'll start pushing back. And again, this is why there's been such a push to try and get the permanent fund itself upwards of $100 million, because then they know that they are not accountable to the people at all. Rob Myers in the chat room says the POM formula draw this year alone will go up over half a billion dollars. It'll go up from 3.2 to 3.8 billion this year. It grows and they have no accountability to the extra money that they're going to be getting from that. And if it goes to 100 million and they're drawing a 5% POMV draw up to a 5%, they're getting $5 billion a year with no input from the people at all. And then they'll say, well, no no taxes. Then the at that point, the push will be on for, for taxes. You're exactly right. But then the top 20% will say, oh, well, God, no, don't tax us. I mean, I know you've taxed middle and lower income Alaska families throughout the 2020s, but don't tax us. And then spending will stop. Well, if you want spending to stop, do that now. Make all Alaska families pay equitably now and bring it. And the top 20% will push to bring spending under control. As long as they don't have to pay for it, they're not going to push to stop it. In fact, they'll continue to push just like they are with K through 12. They'll continue to push to spend because there's no constraint on them from, from the additional spending. Brad Keithley, Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Brad, final thoughts here, about 45 seconds. Well, I, we need to bring spending in. We, we need to bring revenues into this discussion, into the spending discussion. We need to bring equitable revenues into the discussion. You want more spending? Fine. Every Alaska family has to pay for it equitably, not just middle and lower income Alaska families subsidizing the top 20%. Every Alaska family has to pay for it equitably then I think we'll have pushback on spending. No, nope, I don't want that. Yes, go ahead and consolidate schools. Yes, get rid of some administrators. I think that's the right thing to do because I don't want to have to pay an additional amount for it. Until we get to that point, until the top 20% have to pay for it, we're never going to get, we're never going to get spending under control. Asking it's our guest, Brad, as always, it's educational, it's fun. It's the beatdown. Thank you for the beating today. I appreciate that. It's the truth. It's the truth bomb. And I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Michael, as always, thanks for having me. Well, that's a wrap for another week's edition of the weekly top three from Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. Thank you again for joining us. Remember that you can find past episodes on our YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, and Substack pages. And keep track of us during the week on Facebook and Twitter. This has been Brad Keithley, Managing Director of Alaskans for Sustainable Budgets. We look forward to you joining us again next week on the Weekly Top 3.